Hey guys, it's Catherine, and this is Little Bits of Heaven Homestead, where everything we do is a little bit of heaven. I thought I would show you my mealworm setup. So I was in here cleaning this out yesterday, and I thought that maybe uh, you guys would find this of interest. So it is possible to supplement the protein that you supply to your poultry. And I know that there are other critters that love mealworms. My daughter used to have raised red ear slider turtles, and she would buy freeze-dried mealworms at either the pet store place or tractor supply was the most affordable place we could buy big bags of them and then i found a friend locally who was actually raising mealworms herself and she brought me in sent me home with a little butter container full of mealworms the beetles and the eggs and started my own colony so i wanted to show you what i have found to be the easiest way to raise them so this is a three drawer filing system and I actually had to redo this because um, my screen, so I cut out the bottom here, and I had originally hot glued my screen in there, and then it started to lift here in the back, and I had beetles dropping through, so I figured that this would be a perfect opportunity to show you guys my setup, because I had to redo it anyway. So I had, after the hot glue failed me, I tried duct tape. I love duct tape, you can use it for pretty much everything. This is one of those applications that it wasn't super great because it didn't want to stick to either the screen itself or the plastic of the drawer. So I instead went with electrical tape this time. And so what you do here, and I'm gonna have to pick through and uh, you want all of your beetles themselves. Hello Darlene, it's so glad to, I'm glad to see you and I'm glad you caught me too. Hello North Star Prep Stutter. So she's Kathy in Minnesota, check out her channel too. So uh, here on your top drawer system, you're gonna put your adult beetles. And what they do is they are going to burrow to the bottom. They live in a medium of wheat bran and they will also eat the wheat bran. And they will burrow to the bottom, lay their eggs and then their eggs drop through. And those eggs will develop into, let me show you here. So just like the standard life cycle of any beetle, they are going to have the egg stage and then the mealworm itself is their larval stage. And so this is at the stage here that you would start feeding them to your birds. And they're relatively easy to find. Uh, they like to hide in dark surfaces just like the beetles themselves would. So I like to drop a piece of cardboard. They eat paper. This was once a full sheet of paper. So. I uh, add those in there for them to nibble on. And in order for them to get fluids, I will add things like carrot slices or potato slices. That's really all they need in order to drink. So you don't wanna put any sort of fluids in there. You don't wanna get your wheat bran medium all soggy wet. You don't wanna put in anything into your environment that's gonna be conducive of mold. So I live in a relatively dry area. I do feed my worms slash beetles things like bananas, but I check them every couple days and if they start to get gross, I'll pull them out. They are a good little critter to feed any sort of kitchen leftovers. You do wanna watch it, like I said, for mold. So, and then what you are looking for on your next life cycle, so you've got your beetles up here laying eggs, the eggs are dropping through, the eggs become your mealworms, so that is their larval stage, and then they also have a pupa stage. Let's see if I can show you guys this. So, and they look like little mummies, and they don't move very much, and this is actually the pupa stage, so this is what the mealworm will morph into, and at this stage, you can pull them and either put them into some sort of bowl to hold them or throw them up into your adult beetle area because these, their next stage will be to hatch into beetles themselves. And uh, they can be, the beetles themselves can be cannibalistic. I had them all in one big aquarium and if they don't have enough of a food source, they will start to eat not only uh, these guys, the pupa stage, but they'll also eat the worms themselves. The, at the pupa stage here, they have no way to defend themselves or get away, so they are somewhat vulnerable. If you have enough in your colony, it shouldn't be necessarily an issue and your colony will be strong regardless, but it is something to keep in mind and that is one of, hello Kathleen, yes, mealworms. This is my mealworm colony. So it is something you wanna keep in mind as you're growing. If you're starting with a small number, you do wanna be aware that they may cannibalize. 
And that is an advantage of the system because you keep your adult uh, beetles away from the worms and eggs themselves. So one advantage, although I have had this function just well uh, without having any huge reduction in numbers by having them all coexisting. Hello, Danny, welcome. So as you see, it's not really that complicated to raise them. So what I'm gonna do this evening is I am going to go ahead and put my wheat bran in here. Uh, mealworms and the beetles themselves like to, or the beetles themselves can also eat uh, oats. So this is something that I'll add to my top layer. So I will add this drawer back in, add the wheat bran, and then I will start picking through and looking for all my beetles put them into there. When you are searching for beetles, they do like to bury themselves. They like to hide in dark places. So they may not necessarily be on the surface of your medium. You do have to kind of dig and look for them. Same with the worms. But I found when it's time to harvest, if I do have something like a piece of cardboard, that if I lift it, oftentimes there is a bunch hiding underneath there. So let me see what Deb B said before I drop off here. She said, just got your notification for your live show. I watch when I can. I'm into sustainable living, not really homesteading. So uh, we all start somewhere. Hello, Alan. Welcome for joining. So uh, my homestead itself started small. Hello, Barbara. So uh, we all do what we can. Uh, self-sustaining is a step at a time. I don't believe that there is anything as 100% self-sufficiency, but I do believe that each and every step we take is a step in the right direction. So do what you can, even if it's just growing herbs in your windowsill. In fact, in my windowsill over here, that white pot, Let's see if I can plant because it's backwards. The white pot in the middle there is a vanilla bean orchid, and it's one of my attempts to do an indoor homestead. So Alan said he just got notification as well. Well, I'm glad notifications are going out, even if they aren't necessarily right when we start. So thank you guys for joining us. I hope you got something of value. So if you did, please like, share, encourage your friends to subscribe because I do appreciate it. We are an up and coming channel and it is just excited to have, we're just so excited to have you along on the journey with us. So we shall talk to you Thursday. Have a great day. Bye.